from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q, covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com, here with theCUBE's expansive coverage from Oracle Open World 2015, here in San Francisco, here with Kevin DiNuccio, who's the CEO of Violin Memory. Many people know Violin, publicly traded company. Kevin, thank you for joining me here at Oracle Open World. Good morning, Stu, good to be here. All right, so Kevin, you and I were talking offset here a little bit. The storage industry is a dog-eat-dog -dog world, you know, things that, you know, it takes so long to change typically, but it seems over the last kind of 12 to 18 months, you know, just all the rules are changing and there's big changes. I mean, you know, what was it? In the last couple of weeks, there's almost $100 billion of acquisitions in this space. What do you see as some of the big changes? What's happening to the storage industry? Sure, so I, I do believe this move from disk to flash is one of the biggest disruptions that we've seen in tech. And I like it to when, liken it to when mainframes went to mini computers, mini computers to PCs. It tends to be so disruptive that it um, destroys the legacy leaders of an industry and a new set of leaders have to grow up to take the new space because this, the switch of a 30 or 40 billion dollar industry and in technologies that quickly just disrupts uh, the whole way you think about things, the whole way you think about leaders. And I think that's what's happening in the Dista Flash movement, along with other disruptions of cloud and virtualization at the same time has created an opportunity, I think, for IT professionals to really make a difference in how they make their decisions. Yeah. So, Kevin, I, I guess if we look at the, the two acquisitions that happened most recently, I mean, Dell buying EMC. EMC, it can be said, started the whole storage industry as, as we know it today. Uh, and SanDisk, I mean, is a component company. They had bought Fusion IO, who had IPO'd. Uh, you know, what do you see as the landscape? You know, how does storage fit into some of those things you talked about? Virtualization and cloud and system designs. I mean, Oracle's here talking about Exadata and Enterprise Cloud. And, you know, they've, they've got that legacy Sun uh, technologies that they bought. Well, I think generally integrated systems are a growing trend, whether you talk about hyper-converged in the virtualization space or what we've tried to do with the flash storage platform of integrating the high-level data services, the, uh, the deduplication data efficiency engines you need, along with, you know, an architecture to manage flash. Integrate, and more you can integrate for the customer and simplify it as the growth is so explosive with big data today and the Internet of, internet of Things still on the horizon. Okay, C can you unpack for us a little bit the... Uh, the, the solutions that Violin builds, uh, most people when they hear integrated, they think of kind of the stack. Is yeah. a, you know, are you putting the storage together? Is it reference architecture? Is it converged, hyper-converged? Uh, are those just buzzwords? I mean, we, we see, as you said, systems are, are, are becoming more and more the way people buy things. So how do people buy Violin as a product line? You know, who is the buyer? And, and how, how have you seen that been changing in the last sure. couple of years? So I think Flash has gone through a, a, a couple distinct stages. Um, the first was about performance when we invented the market. It didn't really matter what it cost was solving the bottleneck that we saw in disk. Then it kind of moved to, I think, really growing substantially over the last couple of years around virtualization. And that's when deduplication and compression technology became so important. Um, it's now mainstreaming. So we now think primary storage is going to really collapse the multiple tiers that we have because of the deficiencies of disk into a single flash tier for all the active and primary workloads. So we've been targeting over the last couple of years to really intercept that, that beginning of that process and, and really create a single platform for the SAN today. We only attack the SAN. Um, but to really give a single platform that you can consolidate all of your workloads, run your databases at the highest speed, run data efficiency applications like virtualization when you want to, and integrate that into a single simple platform to really get under not just the CapEx that's growing because data storage demand is growing so much, but the OpEx that's been created by all of these multiple tiers, moving workloads around, having to do backup windows, all of that stuff can just be really you know, extracted from the equation today. And that's why we, we talk about IT professional storage decision makers, whoever they are, today can be instrumental in making this change that can give an, a large enterprise an increase in application performance of 10x and probably a reduction of cost by, by 75% or more. Yeah, so, Kevin, uh, you bring up a lot of good points there. Uh, operations has been holding back IT in a lot of ways. We, sure. you know, for so long been talking, you know, how much are people running around the data center, turning knobs, optimizing, creating a bespoke infrastructure uh, that, that, that they have for this environment. Uh, today, you know, the business is driving a lot of these decisions. It's not storing just a store. I mean, we, we talk about, you know, the digital universe and how much data is being created, but if I can't get more value out of the data, if I can't create more business out of, out of what I'm doing, 
you know, why does it matter what I store? Uh, yeah. 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 So, what do you what do you see as some of the some of the those business drivers? You know, how how does violin become you know critical to the way business runs? Sure. So I think that's you know those the use cases we're discovering, and we are discovering them as we go along. But if you look at retail, for instance, inventory is the heartbeat of uh, of a retailer, and we've taken the largest retailers in the world from taking a week to analyze inventory um, to a day. So nightly, they can make distribution and pricing decisions. Um, so that would be re in retail. In a telco or cable, for example, where you're billing lots and lots of users, the billing system, we've seen a telco increase revenues by 150 euro a year just by putting their billing system on flash, identifying someone running out of minutes, messages, data, and being able to shut it off, off make them a new offer, and rebuild them um, for a new offering. So we see business cases, because of flash and the speed that it delivers to these applications, changing the competitive dynamics or the way that you can operate your business. So it can be revenue driving, it can be efficiency driving, and that's what's changing the landscape, along with the cost transformational of, you know, the total cost of ownership of a data center today. All right. So, Kevin, can, can you give this product update? What, what's new with the product line? What should be th people be thinking of? And who are you competing? Who do you disrupt? And, and who are some of the, the tough competitors that you're seeing out sure. in the marketplace? So today we, we still primarily are competing with the big boys. So, you know, EMC, IBM, Hitachi, and in their highest end pro product lines like VMAXs, um, VSPs from Hitachi or, or DSAKs. So we're really attacking the high end of the marketplace and we've delivered a, what we call the flash storage platform. It's a series of arrays along with a full suite of software that ranges from really a unique flash architecture and flash, flash fabric architecture that doesn't use SSDs up through data efficiency software and all of the data management products to try and deliver a product line against those five, six, nines architectures that is very simple to use, can be controlled one, two, three clicks, all of the functionality, not have multiple products in the environment. So that's where we, we started, we announced in February of 2015. We've closed more than a dozen uh, Fortune 500s. Uh, we should be at, you know, four Fortune 100s in the next couple of weeks. So at the high end of the market, really delivering a different value proposition and then people have been able to get in the legacy hybrid array world. All right, so Kevin, can you give us kind of the company update? You're a public company. Are you jealous of all these guys that are going private lately? EMC has plenty of transitions they're going to be doing, and they can do that out of the public eye now. What's your state on the, on the kind of the public markets and the, the financial state of violin memory? Sure, so I, we knew a couple years ago that we had to retool uh, the product line um, because you know we didn't have the data efficiency software that we needed. Um, and so we basically took a step back and really targeted um, for, for February launch that where we thought the marketplace was going in this you know, mainstreaming of flash and primary storage. So we retooled uh, both the balance sheet and the product line and, and, the, and the financials of the company, raised $120 million last year so that we had the, the runway to get through a product transition. We still have that $120 million in the bank, um, burning about 10 or $15 million a quarter, but can reach profitability in four to six quarters with the new product line. It's been growing at basically 100% a quarter since it's been launched. All right, so Kevin, you've been talking to people about the, this transformation, what's going on in violin memory. Uh, if you want to leave our watchers, you know, what's the one thing they should understand about violin memory? Sure. I, I think that we were the pioneer of the industry, and we have experience in the largest corporations in the world and their most mission-critical applications all over the world in all verticals. And we've now delivered a platform that's truly transformational, and IT professionals can be instrumental in changing the competitiveness of their businesses and the cost structure that it costs to keep the uh, data center expanding in, in the new architectures of the future. All right, uh, last thing I want to close on is Oracle, uh, obviously a huge show here in San Francisco. Uh, talk, talk about how Violin plays in, in the Oracle solution set. Sure, so Oracle has been one of the heartbeats of, uh, of our success in that we've accelerated databases all over the world with uh, the largest corporation. So we're very close to Oracle and, and really trying to understand how we uh, can best take those core applications that make, make Amer you know, the world's businesses tick and, and speed them up so it changes uh, the dynamics. Um, today we're having some fun. We've got some uh, stars in the in the booth every day. Today we have someone who was very instrumental uh, in the uh, 49ers championships. We have Jerry Rice in the booth um, to really uh, show that you know people make the difference. And so we have a lot of technology we think we're bringing to the market, but our people are making the difference for the customers. And we think customers can be instrumental in changing their businesses. Yeah, well, Jerry Rice definitely changed the game when it came to the wide receiver. Kevin Anuccio, really appreciate you coming, sharing the story of violin memory. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon, here with theCUBE's coverage, Oracle Open World 2015. Thanks for watching.